Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Are you building a two to $4,000 super premium computer? Are you building something with an X299 or X399 motherboard? Multiple graphics cards, multiple hard drives, frankly, multiple everything. You've come to the right place. This is an 850 watt platinum ultra prime from Seasonic. This thing is a beast. $180 right now on Newegg when I'm filming this video. The price to performance of this is very good. Now, full disclosure, this is an expensive power supply and it's not for everybody. If you're building a $1,000 or maybe $1,500 computer, it's probably overkill. But if you're passing that $2,000 price point, if you're building something that's the best of the best with everything, this is not necessarily overkill. Extreme quality power delivery for extreme overclocking or high-end power delivery for multiple graphics cards that will run for extended periods of time that perhaps you don't want to have interrupted if you're doing non-gaming applications, scientific work or mining or other things, it will certainly do a very good job of those. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to open this up and show you all the features. I'm going to show you the cables and talk about it in more detail. But the short, short version is if you want one of the best power supplies on the market, if you want lots of power available with an extremely clean power delivery, while an absolutely silent power supply, the fan doesn't even turn until it passes 400 watts, again, you've come to the right place. Before we go any further and I show you this power supply, I briefly want to mention this one that I've previously done a video on. My test bench behind me, which has my i7 8700K overclocked to 5 gigahertz on all six cores, 12 threads with no AVX offset, has been running with this power supply for several months now. Completely 100% stable with that overclock, knock on wood, never crashed. I kid you not, that machine is absolutely totally stable. If you're looking for the best of the best, that's what these are for. If you're looking for that top end overclock with no compromises, that's what these are for. And I wanted to mention it because while I haven't used this one yet, it's essentially one uh, power efficiency level lower than the titanium unit that I've previously covered and actually do use on my test bench. Full disclosure, this will be going on my new test bench. I've got another test bench I'm putting together. That's going to be on a Praxis wet bench and I'm gonna be using that for different motherboard reviews from basic all the way up to premium high-end X399 motherboards for Threadripper. And that's why I'm going with a super premium unit, no compromises and no issues with testing, even with extreme overclocking. So if you want a little bit more efficiency, please note that the 850 watt version of the titanium is $30 more than this. It does break the $200 price point. It's 210 versus 180. It's 2% more power efficient. Is it worth it? That's a personal choice. It depends on where you're at. I pay 10 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity, so honestly, that probably doesn't make sense. If you live in a place where electricity costs 25 or 35 cents per kilowatt hour and your computer runs 24 seven, maybe the extra $30 will make a difference to your electric bill. These both have 12 year warranties. You will have these power supplies long after your current build is done. You could easily go through three full builds with this type of power supply. So the power efficiency savings will last for a decade or longer. One quick note before I open this up, when it comes to consumer level power supplies that you can order off of Amazon and Newegg, this is about as top of the line as it goes. I'm sure NASA has something fancier in their command centers, but in terms of the internal components and design, rather than go through a lot of drudgery detail of how the connectors work and the fact that there's no cables inside and it's all solid state everything and very low ripple noise, just suffice it to say that it's basically as good as you can buy. All of the components are top of the line. I mentioned before 12 year warranty. I mentioned that the fan does not even turn until you reach about 400 watts of power draw. So it's hundred percent silent to that point. And it's fluid dynamic bearing 135 millimeters. So beyond that point, it's still ridiculously silent. The cables, the capacitors, the connectors, the ripple, everything is premium. So rather than spend five or 10 minutes going over that in excruciating detail, just suffice to say it's really, really good. Now let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. Now, for what it's worth, as I said before, this isn't for everybody. Not everybody needs a power supply at this level. If you're building a Ryzen 5 or an i5 system, or frankly, even maybe a non-overclocked i7 or Ryzen 7, yes, this is a bit much. You certainly could go with something like an 80 plus gold for $100 or 120, save a bunch of money and still get a perfectly good unit. But if you want the best, that is what this is. Perhaps one of the most minor things in the world, but there is a pull tab to easily pull it out of the box so you're not trying to drop it out of the bottom. 
If you have watched my channel for any length of time, you know I love quality packaging. I really do believe that quality products come in quality boxes and little touches are very nice. It is a very shiny box. Unlike the 80 plus bronze that I recently did, this actually comes in an actual painted or actually colored box. It's very nice. I know it's a box. Opening it up, we have a goodie bag. Yay, it's all the various stuff inside. And we have a basic information packet that says, hey, it's got a 12 year warranty. A quick installation guide is always welcome. Not everybody builds a computer every single month. So if you haven't done one in a while, basically here's how you plug it in. An entirely too fancy user's manual, which frankly doesn't say very much, but it has one. This is very nice. This is a plate for the front of your case and it's actual metal. It's, this is not just a sticker. This is an actual raised metal plate. If you want something shiny and pretty for the front of your computer showing your C-Sonic, hey, it comes with one. For a premium power supply, this is a very, very important thing. Before you go and build your two to $4,000 computer, make sure that your power supply works and powers on. This is a tester. Plug it into the 24 pin ATX cable, turn the thing on and make sure that it works before you plug everything in and run all those cables. Standard case screws, four screws for the power supply in case your case doesn't have, most cases have them, but four extra in case you need them. I mentioned the metal plate before, which was not a sticker. This is a sticker, but it's larger. If you want one, hey, it says Prime on it. Zip ties, these always come in handy. And frankly, if you're building a premium system, you should absolutely have these. These are not only decent length, but there's 12 of them. So you may not need to buy extra twist ties if you're buying this power supply. For all of your hard drives, cables, video cards, and everything else, use this for good cable management. Now the zip ties are for the permanent cables, but maybe you have cables that you might want to remove and reattach. These are multiple Velcro straps. There are, I think five of them here, and you can use those to tie off cables that you might actually add, remove video card cables or something else. Very nice touch. Standard wall power connector, but this is not actually the standard thickness. It is a very thick, heavy gauge cable. Important for a high-end power supply like this. Please do not use a cheap budget wall cable for premium power supplies because it might overheat and melt if you're drawing full power. So the thickness of this really does help. Seasonic provides a very nice bag to hold all of the modular cables. You only have to use the ones you're actually using to free up internal space inside your machine, making cable management and airflow better. Use this handy bag to save the extras. The power supply itself comes in a very nice velvet drawstring bag. Just open it up. Before I even pull this out of the bag, I just want to show you the presentation. It really does look nice. I, some people care about this, some people don't, but at least know that a little bit of extra time was taken for something that costs $180. And here's our power supply. This thing is a beast. And I really like the fact that both sides of the power supply are clean. So whichever way you're installing this in your computer, you're not gonna have some ugly label sticking out the side. Now the label that contains all the legal specifications, wattages, voltages, etc., is right here, but there's no yellow or red or any other color. So it's very muted, it looks very nice. But on both sides, you just have the prime. Now there is a sticker and I'll peel this off for you. And there's another one on the other side. For those of you who like peeling this off, there's multiple. And there's one more on the bottom as well. This is actually where the fan is. Normally this will be facing down, but it does have a very nice logo here. And I take it back, there's one more. A couple of observations. Besides the fact that it looks very nice, yes, that's shiny and reflective, it's very heavy, but very, very, very nice looking. Um, it looks much nicer than your average power supply. In fact, it's a shame, perhaps the most beautiful side of it with the honeycomb shape is one that you will probably never see again once you install it, but it really does look nice. The back of it has a physical hardware switch as you'd expect from any power supply at this level. It does have a hybrid mode button and it does have your standard power connector. There's no voltage selector because it automatically detects between 100 and 240 volts. So it works anywhere in the world. You just have to replace the cable to match your local plug. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this thing has an absolute ton of cables and connectors. Now it's worth noting that the number of cables and connectors varies depending upon which wattage you buy. There is a thousand watt version of this. There's also a 750 watt version. On this one, we have two eight pin CPU power connectors. We have six PCI Express six plus two uh, video card connectors for a whole bunch of video cards. We have 10 SATA connectors, five Molex connectors, a floppy connector if by chance you need one, the standard 24 pin main ATX power connector, 
there's just an absolute ridiculous number of connectors. The 1000 watt power supply, which is about $50 more expensive, besides having 150 watts more power, has a few more connectors. It has eight instead of six of the PCI Express connectors. It has 12 instead of 10 of the SATA connectors, and otherwise it's pretty much the same. Same size, same fan, it's, so it's 150 watts more and a few more connectors for about $50 more money. Now it is worth noting that power supplies are most efficient when they're run at the center of the power band. So 425 watts would be the most efficient for this power supply. It doesn't drop off substantially until you go above or below 20% and 80%. So even though 50% is the most efficient, 65% is fine. It's where you try to run at 90% or 10% that you run into an issue. That being said, are you gonna plug in three or four video cards? You're gonna plug in a dozen or more hard drives? The 1000 watt unit might make sense. For two video cards and maybe four to six hard drives, the 850 would be just fine. As I mentioned before, linked in the description below will be this power supply and the titanium version if you want a couple extra points of efficiency down in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg. Also linked in the description below will be all of my power supply reviews. So if you wanna look through all the different units that I've tested from this and other manufacturers, please check that out if you'd like to see some others. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe using the big huge red button directly below, questions and comments in the comment section, and as always, the video description. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and I will see you in my next video.